Hello everyone and welcome to my nature diaries. I have been just finding so many wildflowers that I decided I'm probably going to be doing at least a couple more spreads of them and I wanted to focus this time on some yellows and you can see I have my diagram worked out already and because it's such a big spread I thought I would just go ahead and draw it. My palette that I'm going to be using today is called Terrain and I decided to go with these pre-mixed greens. They're just all different shades of warm and cool greens and I thought they would look nice with the leaves for this particular spread. For my first layer of color I'm going to be using this medium cadmium yellow and I'm going to lay it down as a first wash over the whole painting on both sides of this particular layout. Like my last entry in my nature diary, I'm going to be covering the whole two pages with color and I'm going to be again focusing on these yellows, some greens with some blues in there as well. Now that I am just about done with this yellow wash of color, I'm moving on to this green palette that I showed you earlier. I am just going to go ahead and start coloring in the leaves and painting what I think I should paint. When you nature journal or put it in a nature diary, you can make a botanical drawing where it's very, very particular of what the flower looks like or the plant. I'm kind of doing a mix of that, I feel. Uh, I am showing the major parts of the flower and the leaves, but I'm also painting it in what I would like to say is an illustrative style, kind of an art style. It's totally up to you again if you want to use that particular method or you know, if you want to make it a little bit more scientific, I, I guess the biggest thing is to make sure that we just go ahead and nature journal or record what we see in nature in some kind of diary. And so I'm, I feel like this channel is a bit of a mix of nature journaling, art journaling, because it, the main thing is we just want to make art. That is one of the best feelings ever is when we find something, we discover it and see its beauty and we realize I really want to capture that somehow. What a way to get inspired from nature. Now that I'm painting the second flower, you notice I put it on two different pages and I wanted to create a sense of continuity between the two different pages. Now that I'm mostly done with these greens, I'm going to start working completely on the right side and I, I need to do the edges and these flowers here and of course the flower on the right. And I'm just going to go ahead and add the different yellows and I'm using a yellow ochre right there. I'm really liking how this is turning out so far. I'm going to go ahead now and just finish that right hand flower. And to do that, I'm going to show you, I'm going to be using this, it's called drawing gum or masking fluid. So I will go ahead and apply that with a brush onto the centers of these flowers. Now the secret to saving your brush is first use an old one and then the second is make sure I just rolled it around in some soap and a real thick soap and that'll keep the masking fluid from ruining that brush or not being able to come off. It's pretty amazing how easily it just washes out. I'm going to let that masking fluid get nice and dry before I go and paint any flowers. I'm just going to finish up painting these leaves again in the various different green. When I am drawing a diagram or picture of something that I have found, I do try to take it as much from nature or reference photo as possible. And I also try to make sure I get at least one example of the leaf shape and or the if it's a compound leaf or a dissected leaf because a lot of times when you're looking at a photo or even looking at the plant in nature it kind of looks all jumbled together but I don't necessarily want it to be a botanical painting I, I again I wanted it to be more illustrative in its style I really am trying to keep the leaf color here light or at least most of them but I am going now in with some darks behind the front leaves just to show depth and shadow and just try to make it look a bit varied because I'm going to put as you've seen in the last um, couple flowers that I did I'm going to be putting a dark background so everything can really pop in the front I'm finishing up this particular flower by painting the green sepals that are all around it and that's one of the things that helped me to identify what this plant was 
as I go to paint the flowers, I'm going to use a lemon yellow. I decided to go really light and bright for this particular flower because I wanted to add some, I'm going to be adding some yellow ochre after that to just show some shadow and give it some the dimension and depth. So there's the yellow ochre and I really wanted a high contrast with that because you know flowers aren't really flat. They're kind of flat when you look at them but there are shadows and different things with it and this helps to give dimension and liveliness to a painting. I'm going in with a raw ombre dark brown to go behind all of the leaves just to kind of get a feel of that there's dried leaves that these wildflowers are coming up out of. And then I'm gonna to move to this ultramarine blue to just create kind of shadows. And I'm illustratively putting it behind leaves in places where they might overlap. This is just, again, subjective. And I liked how it looked and how it turned out. So it's up to you if you would want to add that little effect, but I really do like how it looks. With a large brush, I'm now going to finish the sides and borders with the greens to match the other side. Then I will be taking off this mastic. It left quite a bit of white area, so with a Micron 0.01, I'm going to represent the stamens. There's quite a few in the flower, and I'll probably go back and fill in some of the color because it's a little bit bright and stark for me. I'm going to go ahead and finish up the illustration with details such as the dots, more outlining, and then we are going to go ahead and work on that title. Now is the time that I'm going to take some medium cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, to paint the title of the spread. Using a very fine tip brush for this helps out immensely, but even if you do make mistakes, the nice thing is you can clean up the paint that's gone over to the sides with some fresh water. So it's definitely fixable, even if you've seen me make some mistakes. I know I can go back and clean things up before it dries. My favorite Kuretake Super Black ink. This is a permanent ink, and I'm going to be using a fountain pen for my writing today. One of the things that you want to do is fill in the details or whatever, again, that you want to know about each particular flower. Even if you can find it in a field guide or online or somewhere else, what's great about nature journaling is when you write something down, you paint it, you write it down, it's going to help you remember details about it that you wouldn't have remembered normally. I also would like to invite you, if you have not yet subscribed, to go ahead and do that now. I'd really appreciate it. And then, of course, like and comment if you would, you know, like to tell me something about your nature journaling experiences or what you would like to do as far as a nature diary or art in general. What I love about this nature diary, nature journal, is that I put my own personal feelings and thoughts about what we found and, and have seen, as well as information about the flowers. So for me, it's a great combination of art, memories, and information in one book. And hopefully not just for me to enjoy, but for my friends and family. Thank you so much for watching to the end. Please feel free to share this video if you feel like it will help encourage or inspire someone else that you know. I've only got a few more layouts in this particular book. This will be my first full nature diary to be done. I have other ones that are not finished yet. I'm really excited about that. So stay tuned for more of those. And remember that you are amazing and creative. And until next time, bye.